What's going on everybody? I'm Jason with Tennessee Mountain Homestead and today we're back working on the tractor. Last episode you saw we installed the MCP uh, brake caliper on the transmission and we also installed the master cylinder. So this episode if you notice we took the transmission out. We dropped it out. It's, it's bolted to this frame member on its own and it's free of the tractor because I had to modify this, this brake disc a little bit. If you remember in the previous episode when we installed this, this Go Power Sports disc, it worked great and everything. However, when it was all the way on the brake shaft here, for it to be in the in, inside of the caliper kind of correctly, it didn't engage the, the keyway, which is right here, all the way. There was maybe about an eighth of an inch or so of the keyway sticking out. So what I did was, I went and got another hub for a one inch uh, keyed shaft from uh, a, a, a tractor supply type store. And if you saw the shorts that we made, I'll put some, uh, some clips of that happening. But we basically turned um, my Peerless A20 transmission into a, a, an improvised lathe. So we took that, that one inch keyed hub and I cut a piece off of it that would fill in that extra space on the shaft there. And I cut, I cut the center of it out where I have these, I got two more set screws. Got it all, got it all perfect, welded it up all the way around. Now I have extra hub thickness, extra keyway engagement, and now I have four set screws. So with that being said, we're gonna put this back on the transmission. We're gonna put the transmission back in the tractor. Oh, one more thing about that. We took this out because now that this brake caliper is hard lined with steel lines, it's not so easy just to take this thing out, but it's super easy to unbolt the transmission and just drop it out the bottom. So like I said, with that, we're gonna, the first thing we're gonna do is put this back on. We're gonna put the transmission back in the tractor and we're going to add brake fluid and we're gonna bleed the, uh, bleed the brakes. We got the transmission back in the tractor. And if you look, ever since we did that modification, we added some of that hub length in here. I got four set screws, a keyway, and now where this uh, rotor used to be over to the, over to, favored over to one side, now it's more or less centered in the caliper. So that way now when it turns, it don't touch nothing. It, don't, it doesn't rub on one side. So the next thing we're going to do is start bleeding the brakes. Next, we're gonna add fluid to the master cylinder. So, Stefan has the Harbor Freight vacuum pump. He's got a, a, a vacuum pull on this thing right now. I'm gonna go put some in the cylinder. I'm gonna to top it off, and we're gonna see what happens. After a lot of pumping on the, on the Harbor Freight vacuum pump, a lot of pumping on this pedal, a lot of bleeding and brake fluid all over the place, even though it wasn't supposed to be, I think we got it. So, we got all the air out of the lines, and we got this deal this set up perfectly right now. So if you go under there, you can see, maybe you'll see the brake calipers squeezing on the disc. Feels good. Okay, brakes are bled. Now we're gonna start reassembling this thing. My goal is to get all the engine, the belts, all that stuff back in, and then we need to figure out how the gas pedal is going to work. Once we have that established, we're going to do a little bit of preliminary wiring just to get this thing a circuit so it can run, put a little battery in there. Maybe we can test drive this thing finally. So a few more minutes and we'll be back. We got the mower all put back together. If you look in here, this is the, uh, the oil drain that I talked about. I ended up getting a 90 degree fitting from eBay, comes off the back of the engine. I got a strap right here holding it so it can't flop around. And then all I would have to do is take off this cap right here and the oil should drain out. So belt guide, pulley, we used grade eight fasteners with locking nuts, nylon nuts to put the engine back in. Belt guide, brake, pedal. Couple things worth mentioning guys. So I celebrated a little bit too quickly when I put the master cylinder on 
and then when I added the spring for the for the clutch lockout for the factory clutch lockout lever I ended up using holes that I had drilled for other things no big deal it worked out the, the master cylinder and this belt brake now share one share a common hole I gotta leave a longer bolt for that but that's the 5 16 for the brake caliper right there and I just had to end up drilling a new hole right here for the spring for the lever the locking lever for the clutch Otherwise, come around here on this side. You can see the engine pulley and the guides. And you can see the master cylinder right here. That's it. So next, we're going to put this thing back down on all four wheels and we're gonna get started routing the throttle cable and figure out a gas pedal. All right, it's been about three or four days since you last saw us. so. It's been really hot out. We've done a lot of work off camera, but today we're gonna to catch up with you guys and show you what's going on in a minute. All right, so the first thing I did, I made some modifications to the brake. So you, I think you saw us mount the master cylinder last, and we used the factory brake pedal location and lever. I put a, a Heim joint on it, connected it to the master cylinder. So. It felt really, we put the C-pan back on this thing and it felt really easy to push the pedal. So I added this spring here into the system and it gives it a little more of a, of a resistance feel. So it feels more like an actual brake pedal. The next thing we did was we added the throttle cable. So this connects to the top of the carburetor, it connects to the slide. And I routed it down, I use these little aluminum clips from Home Depot for cable. Routes down, it runs along the top of the frame rail right here with clips and it comes up around underneath and here's the end of it. And it goes to this pedal right here. Now, I know this pedal is extremely ugly because it's not going to be permanent. We're putting this on here because I really need to get this thing started up and I really need to drive it around and test the clutch system, make sure it's good because we've totally fabricated that. And this pedal's in a, in a kind of a bad spot and it's ugly, I had to hack the floor pan up. But here's what's going on in the future. We're gonna cut these floor pans out. We're gonna cut these feet wells out of them. And we're gonna come off the, we're gonna come off the, the, the frame with tubing and make like big, you know, with plenty of room for your feet stands with expanded metal and all that so you can stand up on them like an ATV or whatever something like that so these are going to go away this this uh gas pedal's temporary so the next thing I've done is I added the fuel system if you look right here I got a 12 volt fuel pump and the gas tank's going to sit right on here we're using the stock gas tank and it's going to have a valve and it's going to connect to this hose right here that's going to go right up into the fuel tank so the fuel line, if you come around this way, the fuel line routes up through the side of the chassis right there with I used electrical clips and I bolted it through the frame. And also when we talk about the wiring, this is the fuel pump wiring and the tail lights that I'm going to have on this thing. And I use the same bolt a common bolt with a strap for the fuel line and a strap for the wiring. The fuel line comes up. I put a little bit of Gorilla Tape around here in case it rubs the frame. And it comes up and goes up to the carburetor. One more thing worth mentioning, and we're going back to the MCP brake caliper, is this pad on the right hand side where my finger's at, that pad when I applied the brake it would bind up and it wouldn't retract. What was going on is the the brake was actually kind of pinned up between the mount that I made for it and the housing of the transmission. So somehow, some way, I guess that when I went, it was causing a tweak to it or a binding action. I don't know. I ended up taking the the mount back off, and also there's adjustment screws on these brake pads. There's Allen Allen head um, bolts here, or some some type of set screw that you can run in and out, and you can set the distance away from the rotor that the pad is. So as you can see right now, it's pretty centered. 
and I also put a washer in between the frame and this brake mount that we made last time. And it seemed to help quite a bit. Moving back up to the top side of the engine, we got the fuel line coming up here. And I went with 5 16 because 5 16 is the size of the, uh, the fuel inlet for the carburetor on the bowl there. So I made the whole entire fuel system 5 16 There's going to be a shutoff valve here. One at the gas tank and one up here at the engine because first off, the hose isn't quite long enough to reach nicely. Second, um, Performance 670 says on their website when I bought this carburetor that it's, they, just, they put a needle and seat in there for use with a fuel pump. Now, I've also seen some other videos, not pertaining to this exact situation, but other people running 12 volt fuel pumps to their carburetors and it's a little bit too much. It's more than a pulse pump would have, more PSI or whatever, and it floods the bowl. I don't know if that's the problem, if, it, if that's going to be a problem or anything, but I'm going to just for a you know, preventative maintenance or whatever, I'm going to have a fuel shutoff valve right here, and that way if, if it's too much, I can dial it down. I can turn it down to choke some of that fuel off coming from the pump. And it also will give me a joint in the hose so I can get a little bit, another little piece that will reach there nicely and go in this little clip that's supposed to hold it. The next thing I've done is I installed the remote choke cable for the carburetor. Now I bought the choke cable for the carburetor from Performance 670. The only problem is I wanted to use the factory choke location. Now it reached, but it was basically stretched from the carburetor. I had to bend a 90 in the old cable and it went straight down to the choke lever. And it just wasn't going to work out with the batteries and it, was just, it just wasn't right. So. I had another throttle cable laying around, and it was like a 70 inch one that I had gotten from, I think, Go Power Sports. But I ended up cannibalizing the pieces from the Go, from the Performance 670 kit, the choke cable they sent. It was this piece, this threaded piece right here. And then I, um, I cut the cable housing down. And then to make the cable work with this choke, of course, the ferrule on the cable that was much longer wasn't going to work out. I had to cut that off. So what I did was I took a butt splice, I shaved off three eighths of an inch, or no, not three eighths, three sixteenths I think it was, it has to fit in that choke cable, and I soldered it to the end of the cable. And then I put, put back in this housing, and now we've got plenty of cable. As you can see, it comes up and it goes underneath the battery when the battery's in here, we'll get to that in a second. And it comes up and it goes to the choke, and now we've got a working choke. Worked out pretty good. So the last thing that I've done, one of the biggest things I've done to get this thing running is wiring. Now, what I did was I ended up putting a battery switch down in here off the shelf at AutoZone, 100 amp battery isolator switch. I used the stock key switch from the Predator 670, how it came from Harbor Freight. That's the key switch for it. That's the fuse. There's a circuit breaker that's in, that's in line from the charging system that's right here. It's, it's outside. I'll show you in a second. You can see down in there. Wait, let me do this. Hold on. Hold on. No big deal. Can you see? Is that better? Mm -hmm. No? Alright. Well, anyway, the circuit breaker is down there. I added a common negative negative point for where all my negative wires to land on. That's right here. This came, this goes to an electrical panel. Got a ton of those on my truck. Come over here on the outside. So this is where the variator used to be. The variator arm that controlled all that pulley stuff in there. So this here is the circuit breaker. That's in one of the stock holes that held the variator in. That's the circuit breaker from the Harbor Freight uh, 670 platform. This here is the battery key switch, and there's a, a red key goes in there, and you turn that. And then all these other holes that were in this, well, this is these screws are for the negative ground plate that I have in there. A couple screws, did some of this stuff, and come, come around back over here. So for power distribution, I could not find a fuse block on the shelf at any of the auto parts stores in town. So I ended up getting this, this common bus. So I've got my bus feeds right off the secondary side of the battery switch. This, is, this feeds a common bus, 
and all each one of these red wires just comes off of that bus and it goes through this little fuse block. It's a little, I think it's a five circuit or a six circuit fuse block. And this little, has this little plastic cover. So right now I've got a fuel pump, I've got headlights, and I've got my voltmeter. That's the three circuits I'm running right now. And those circuits just come off the other side, come up in this mess that I've made of this wiring, and it goes to my individual switches. So there's my factory headlight switch right here. It still works, I left it alone. I changed out the PTO switch and I put in a regular 20 amp single pole switch for the fuel pump. Here's my tachometer. I mean, I'm sorry, my voltmeter, excuse me. And then the choke lever's down here. So with that, pretty much concludes our wiring. Here's my negative battery cable. This goes down to the frame right here. I got it bolted down here to the frame. And here's my positive battery cable. So one of the most exciting things I've done besides the wiring is I got an actual car battery. And it fits in here pretty well. I was gonna go ahead and just get a $62, 350 crank and amp uh, lawn battery like we do, normally would use. There was a car battery in this thing when I got it from the junkyard. I don't think it was supposed to be in there, but there was a big car battery in this. Anyway, I got a medium sized car battery. It's not a full size, because it was just too big. But anyway, you can see it there. So what I did yesterday was I built this battery tray for it. Right here. And the battery sits on this steering column support, I guess you would say this piece of steel is. It supports the steering column and it supports the steering box down lower. So I, I made this out of sheet metal. I, it already had this, this side was already folded up. It had this shape on it already. It was pieced to an electrical panel. And then what I did was I cut the sides out a little bit bigger, put it in the vise, and I bent the sides up to give it more rigidity. Now I want the battery to sit up against the back of this. So I didn't put a, I didn't put a, a, a bend on this side. I left, it, I left it open. So that way water can drain off of it or whatever. And the battery is going to sit up against this thing. Anyway, I drilled out four quarter 20. And I, I, I bought a countersink. And I countersunk the sheet metal. And then I also had to countersink the steel that it screwed to. So these screws would sit down there nice and flush. And uh, that's the battery tray. So we're going to put the battery in it and show you what's happening. What's, uh, what's... So one more thing we're going to do before we put the battery in that tray is the boys and mama, now the boys said it was okay. Look here. This came out from under the kitchen cabinets. They said that you never use this one. It's a silicone cooking sheet. And we cut a knife, it's really tacky and it's sticky and it's, it's just perfect. And I don't want the battery just grinding away on the paint there on that thing and, and the screw heads or whatever. They don't really protrude, but I figured this would be nice and it would give it a nice surface. And it's, you can't even slide it on this, on the, on the wood. It's, it's kind of tacky and sticky, but it's not sticky. It's just got a lot of friction. So we're going to place that in the battery tray first. And it'll give the battery a nice, soft, so you put it in here, I can't even slide it on this. A nice, soft surface to sit on there. Okay. So the battery sits perfect, just like that. So this here is an Econocraft from, I believe, AutoZone. It's got 410 cold cranking amps. And it's got 510 cranking amps. So that's substantially more than a lawn tractor battery. And it's got posts. So I had to switch to posts. Now this cable's a little bit tight because I just used, I had I had to buy these. Well, I didn't have to, but I did. And then I realized I could have just bought cables that already had these on them. But I had what I had. This here's a little piece of four gauge cable that I cut off from another part of another tractor but it, so it just reaches but it's cool that's perfect and then the negative battery cable got to snake it up under here no we don't I'm, I'm just being all kinds of ate up there's the negative battery cable and then guys check this out I, I fabricated this out of aluminum bar stock yesterday is my battery hold down 
what, it, what happens here is I just bent a little offset to come off of the side of the, whatever this is called, the battery box, the enclosure for the goodies. And I bent a little offset in this stuff. I think, I think it's eighth inch thick aluminum by one inch wide. Bent a 90. Obviously you can see what I did. I did it on both sides. And then when you put a, a quarter 20 bolt in here and just snug it up nice, it holds this battery super, super, super stiff in there. Like you can shake the whole tractor, the battery don't move. So that's it guys. That's the battery, the wiring, the choke, the throttle cable, the brakes, the fuel pump. We're so close to getting this tractor um, to be able to start it up. The one thing I'm missing right now, and I'm going to do it today, that's the point of this video next, is the exhaust. Now the, I can't just test it with the, with the stock exhaust because it just doesn't fit on here. It, it hits, hits up against the sheet metal here and it's also pointing directly back at me. And I'm not going to be using it anyway, so today's the day that we're going to start fabricating. Come over here, check this out. This here is the stock exhaust muffler. I don't have, and this is happening in real time, I don't have any kind of the kit from eBay. I didn't spend them 44 or 50 bucks or whatever it is for the pre-bet mandrel pieces and all that. I just didn't do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the stock exhaust flanges on this muffler. I'm going to cut these off as close as I can to the muffler body and I'm going to use these little 45s on at least the front side because, come back over here. Hey Ethan, hand me that muffler. So here's the back exhaust port. I got shirt pieces of rag stuffed in them so nothing gets in there. And here's the muffler I got from eBay. It's a motorcycle muffler. It's got the weld on, you know, the piece that adapts to your exhaust pipe. It's got a baffle inside of it. You can't see through it. So it's got a, it's got a baffle built in. I'm not sure if it's removable, but I don't care. I don't want it to be wide open. So there's my muffler. And I can't run these exhaust pipes down and out the back, which, you know, ultimately, originally in my mind, that's what I wanted to exhaust out the back of this thing. It's just not going to work out with the belt system. With every, how tight everything is, all the stuff going on underneath it, the clutch, all that stuff is just too much. So stock from factory, this thing spit the exhaust out the front, right out here. You can still see it's all black from the exhaust and the oil and everything else. So my, I'm just going to duplicate that. I'm going to stick this motorcycle muffler straight out the front, and the cowling goes over this. It, 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 I think it fits with the cowling. We tested it well, last night. So as, but as you can see here, Unless this thing is sticking all the way out, this exhaust port right here is going to be tough. I can't just come out and 90 into the muffler unless I want this thing out here like this. And I, I kind of don't. I want it back so it's just sticking out, kind of proud of the cowling. So I've got to somehow fabricate this pipe to come out and turn, which I'm going to use those 45s that we just talked about turn and then kick back and then I guess I got to pie cut something or do something we haven't you know and turn it this one's going to be able this back exhaust pipe is going to be able to come straight out and 90 straight into that muffler this one's got to meet up with it because I'm going to do two into one so with that we're going to get fabricating we're going to start making decisions and we'll see you soon one more thing I forgot to talk about I covered up a couple of the gaping holes that were in this right here I put this really thin aluminum diamond plate and I used pop rivets and riveted it on. That used to be the, there was, used to be a big pipe coming out of there and it was, uh, that was the deck height adjustment. You could pull that up and down and the deck would go up and down. There was a big hole there, it was ugly. I think that looks better. Now on this side over here, same thing. I think we already talked about most of that. The variator, we repurposed the variator hole for the battery key. And there was a big slot right here. I forget what that was for. Same thing though, I've used a piece of diamond plate. Super thin aluminum. It's, you can cut it with shears. And then I put back these two, this is where you, you used to be able to adjust the variator. So these two, these were factory. I just popped those back in. And now let's get to the muffler. All right guys, we filmed things around here one minute to the next in like a real timeline uh, scenario. 
Anyway, there's a couple more things before we're gonna, we're gonna do the muffler in another video. Anyway, so we put, I put the, uh, the fuel shutoff valve from the gas tank down in here next to the fuel pump. And this is gonna connect to the barb on the, on the fuel tank. No big deal. The second thing we did was I had forgotten about the fuel filter. So we put that up here in the engine compartment. As you can see, it's a 5 16 barb fuel filter, automotive. And I used an inch and a quarter electrical uh, conduit hanger, or we, we, we call them mineral axe straps in the trade. So that's an uh, electric conduit hanger. I got my other piece of fuel line. We actually left on the last clip. We left, we had to go to town. So I ended up getting a little more fuel line. And on Friday, I'm getting another one of those shutoff valves, an inline fuel shutoff valve, the same as that one from eBay. I only bought one, forgot I needed two. I'm going to cut one in right, right in here someplace. Maybe right next to the carburetor, I don't know. Anyway, we did that, and uh, that's it. So the next video, we're going to get to work right away on the, on the muffler, but that's going to be a separate video. So once again, please like and subscribe. Really appreciate all the views, all the comments. Everything's been wonderful. And my name's Jason, Tennessee Mountain Homestead, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, we film things around here one minute to the next in like a real timeline uh, scenario. Anyway, there's a couple more things before we're going we're gonna to do the muffler in another video. Anyway, so we put, I put the, uh, the fuel shutoff valve from the gas tank down in here next to the fuel pump. And this is going to connect to the barb on the, on the fuel tank. No big deal. The second thing we did was I had forgotten about the fuel filter. So we put that up here in the engine compartment. As you can see, it's a 5 16 barb fuel filter, automotive. And I used an inch and a quarter electrical uh, conduit hanger, or we, we, we call them mineral axe straps in the trade. So that's an uh, electric conduit hanger. I got my other piece of fuel line. We actually left. On the last clip, we left, we had to go to town. So I ended up getting a little more fuel line. And on Friday, I'm getting another one of those shutoff valves, an inline fuel shutoff valve, the same as that one from eBay. I only bought one, forgot I needed two. I'm gonna cut one in right, right in here someplace. Maybe right next to the carburetor, I don't know. Anyway, we did that and uh, that's it. So the next video, we're gonna get to work right away on the, on the muffler, but that's gonna be a separate video. So once again, please like and subscribe. Really appreciate all the views, all the comments. Everything's been wonderful. And my name is Jason, Tennessee Mountain Homestead, and we'll see you in the next one.